Destiny 2 Warmind is in full swing, secrets have been exposed, exotics been found, and secret passages are still throwing me for a loop, and I've yet to figure out what they do. Well, with so many things going on after the story ends, it can get a little confusing. So let's dive in and check out a simple guide on how you can start your journey to get the Sleeper Simulant, one of Destiny 1's most powerful heavy weapons. What's up Guardians, Sly here, back at it with another D2 Warmind video for you, and today we're going to check out how to get the exotic linear fusion rifle, the Sleeper Simulant. It was my favorite heavy to use in D1 for long range engagements, and it feels good to hear it charging up once again. So before we start, I am super behind on all my guides, including the raid guide. I threw my back out, changing a propane tank underneath a shelf in my yard like three days ago when I was basically stuck in bed for like three days straight. I couldn't sit or it would start spasming. I could barely walk. It was a total nightmare. And it has to happen, of course, on all days when the DLC releases. Now, today's the first day I'm actually able to walk around halfway decent. So I apologize for the lack of guides because there are so many things we need to talk about. But it is what it is. Now, there is a bit to cover in this guide. So let's stop the babbling and go ahead and get started. First, after you've leveled to level 30 and have completed the campaign, you'll start to get end game missions like we talked about in my last video. There are these blue icons you see right here. The same things we used in D2 to get the Mita Multi-Tool, Sturm and Drang, stuff like that. So go ahead and complete all of those. Once you finish those, you'll have a Warmind Engram. That's the Ikelos Hand Cannon. That will drop for you and that's how you get things started. This will be your starting point and quest to get the Sleeper Simulant. The other video I made on day one was only a few hours into everything and it was just an overall guide on how to get things started with all these collectibles. Here, however, I'm going to walk you through everything you need to do. So once you have the Ikelos Hand Cannon, two pursuits will drop. One's called Nascent Dawn, the other Violent Intel. Now Nascent Dawn is another quest in which we'll talk about at a different time. But the first one is the one you need to focus on, Violent Intel. You'll have to kill a bunch of Cabal and Hive with your hand cannon. Now this takes a while to finish, so go ahead and focus on patrols, public events, VIP chests, Mars challenges, and Escalation Protocol has a ton of Hive in there, especially the very first level and very first round. You have a ton of Thrall that you can shoot with this hand cannon. That'll get it done super quick. Now when you're doing all these activities, you'll start to see these things called Resonant Stems start to drop. Four of them combined will give you an override frequency to open the sleeper nodes, which are those floating triangle things you see all over the map. Now, you can open one or two, but wait until you get to the end of the nascent dawn quest. You'll have to open one to get the first arctic weapon from Anna Bray, but save the rest of them. You're going to need as many as you can find a little later on. So, focus on killing Hive and Cabal while looting resonant stems. Once the quest is complete, it will drop the second part, which is called Rasputin's Culling. You have to kill Majors or Ultras with the Hand Cannon. So, any Yellow Bar, Orange Bar, VIP, Public Event Boss, Strike Boss, etc. Those count towards completing this quest. Once again, try to multitask here and do various things in the open world while trying to kill these harder enemies. After that completes, you'll see the next step drop, and it involves heroic strike missions. And if you're not leveled properly, they can be pretty tough. The day I completed this step was day two of the Warmind DLC, and the, I think that was Blackout Day. That's when the Blackout modifier was popped up on these strikes. Any melee was instant death. So dogs, thrall, I mean, hive, anything, anything that touched you, you were dead. Even with your super and full masterwork armor on, it still was an instant death. It was crazy, and we wiped tons of time. So be aware of your modifiers when entering heroic strikes. Also, at least for me, there was an extremely annoying glitch with this quest step. You have to complete five heroic strikes with the Ikelos hand cannon equipped. However, if you do not physically have it in your hand at the end of the strike, it will not count. So as soon as the strike boss dies, immediately switch to the Ikelos hand cannon and keep it out while picking up your rewards. Do not have any other weapon in your hand or you've just completed this strike for fun. I didn't get my gun out fast enough like five times and that was like five extra strikes I had to complete. Now I'm not talking about switching to a different energy weapon and then switching back. I mean having the Ikelos equipped, but using your kinetic or heavy weapon. This will cause it to not count if the strike ends and you're still holding out your heavy. Once again, make sure a weapon is visible in your hand by the time the rewards fly out of the chest or it may not work. So just a heads up on that because it was terribly frustrating and one of the reasons why this guide was out now instead of day two. Also, I heard about a way to tell if it will glitch when entering the strike. If you're flying in and the strike tells you which one you're actually going into before you land, it will cause this glitch. So at the end, you have to have the hand cannon in your hand. So if you don't want to do that, go ahead and exit out of the strike and try again. Like I said, I simply made sure my hand cannon was out in my hand at the end of the strike and it worked for me. But if you can avoid this altogether, why not do it that way? 
So after you completed your five heroic strikes, here comes the hard part. The step known as nodes and protocols. You have to unlock 15 sleeper nodes and you have to advance three levels in escalation protocol. Now for those who messed around with it immediately after the campaign, you know those bosses are no joke and they get harder as the level increases. So go ahead and find some friends off your friends list or use LFG to complete this. Now the best way to do this is to simply use the first level three times. No matter where you start Escalation Protocol, if it's by the Glacier or if it's by you know the Futurescape, it's always going to be the same thing, at least for this week. Your level one boss is that tanky ogre, but once you hit around 350-ish and so have your teammates, it becomes pretty easy and you can melt him with supers and heavy with plenty of time to spare. So if you want to get this done quickly guys, just kill that level one ogre, then fail the next level, restart and do it two more times. Once you're done with that, it goes from hard to super grindy. You now have to unlock 15 of those sleeper nodes. And remember guys, it takes four resonance stems combined to unlock just one. So this step takes some time to complete. Now hopefully you will have quite a few saved up by now. And if not, be sure to do the heroic adventure on Mars along with public events, patrols, VIP enemies out in the area, Mars challenges, etc. All of these drop resonance stems. And when you multitask all these things together, it goes by much faster. Now, all of the nodes are spread all over Mars, so once you combine four steps into an override frequency, inspect it, and then read at the bottom. It will tell you where to go. The first part is the main area of where it's located. Second part is a little more specific, and the third part is what's located right next to it. So this does make it fairly easy, but you never know where you're going to go next. Once you've grinded that, you are on the very last step, my friends, the campaign boss fight at power level 360. And don't be alarmed by 360, it is pretty easy. If you have a fire team, just use rockets or linear fusion rifles and Valkyries and it's a complete cakewalk. Beating this guy is just extremely, extremely easy. It's a little tough solo, but definitely not impossible. After that, simply head to Anna Bray and you, my friend, are done and the sleeper simulant is now yours. This is way more of a grind than it is difficult. The only hard part is remembering to have your weapon out in your hand at the end of a strike and finding guardians level enough to beat the first level in Escalation Protocol, but that's really about it. By the end of this first week, it should be fairly easy. Everyone should be at least be in the 350 range, so it's going to be a lot more easy than it was the first or second day. This sleeper is still an absolute beast. I mean, Callus, Argos, and especially Solar Sin Strikes and Nightfalls, it can one-shot just about any major with a shield, regardless of what it is, and two to three shot big yellow bars like Hive Ogres. It's an all-around beast. So before getting into the new raid, it is definitely a useful tool to have, so make sure you grab it before heading in. But that is about it, Guardians. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it goes smoothly. Take care and keep an eye out for my raid guide, which I'll have out as soon as possible. With my back messing up and being stuck in bed for the past three days, I mean, that really freaking threw me off, like, bad. So I am way behind. But either way, it will be out soon. Hope you're enjoying Warmind and keep it here for everything Warmind-related. Feel free to check me out on Twitter or Facebook, Sly Nation, Sly Nation Gaming. Take care, Guardians, and keep those eyes peeled for tons more Warmind videos in the very near future. But until then... This is your dude Sly, and I'll catch you all next time.